Hello, this is Talon with Old Guy Stuff on Busy Corner Lane, and I'm going to make this a more serious video than usual because I'm going to talk about some serious topics with this. And it's mainly, um, there's two main parts to this. And one is sexual exploitation of children, whether they look animated or not, and um, grooming children to thinking this is not only acceptable behavior, but preferred by adults. And I'm going to show some examples of this. Okay, and then near the end of the video, we're going to talk about how they're actually promoting slavery with this game. Now, a lot of games will um, have characters that look young and they dress in provocative ways. Um, these are just examples I currently have as games, um, so I can show those as examples. But there are other games out there that do similar stuff. So... We're going to talk about Xenoblade. Okay, this is Xenoblade Chronicles 1, the very first one. And we're going to be mainly discussing uh, Malia and Sharla, two of the main female characters. Malia is uh, not exactly human, um, but her race of people live a long time. She's a princess of her people, uh, and she is made to look about like she's a 10 year old human just with some interesting wing things on the back of her head okay now as a 10 year old it looks like she's wearing lingerie and you can see some panties under that okay um she can wear different outfits though like she can have this to me that looks more provocative um but it could be like a, a kid going to the beach uh, however, uh, most parents aren't going to let their, say, 10-year-old daughter go to the beach looking like this. They're usually going to be a little bit more covered up, okay? But Malia, being princess of her people, also can dress conservatively, so she's got an outfit like this, okay? And there's many different um, ways you can set your look. But what I have found is, um, for the skills and abilities in, in combat situations that these people go into, the outfits that look the most sexually provocative are generally the ones that are stronger in combat because they can um, let you have different skills that uh, you might find preferable. They can take item slots like the Monster Hunter games do so that you can enhance those skills. Okay, um, And then you get Sharla. Sharla is supposed to look like an adult. So she wants to dress like this, you know, no big deal other than the fact that, you know, the game is made for 12 year olds. So if a 12 year old, if my 12 year old grandkid is playing this game and I walk in, one of my first things I'm going to ask is, does your mom know you're playing this game? Because that might not be acceptable, you know, to the mother. Okay. But this looks provocative, but this other outfit she's about to have looks more conservative. No big deal on this, but the one that's generally better for the combat are usually the ones that are more provocative looking, and I don't think that's by accident. Now let's compare this to some Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And we're going to start with this one over here on the end. Um, she's of a um, race that's not exactly human. She's part animal, um, but definitely is somebody who's Mom comes walking across the living room and sees this on the TV with their 12-year-old playing it. They might have some something to say about that. Okay. Now, let's watch the animation on this to see how this character really is, though. So, I'm going to let this whole video play. It's about 40 seconds long. Notice animal feet, animal tail. They have to show the behind like that. Got to show all the cleavage. Basic animal type claws on the hands. The character's demeanor is to look and act as sexual as possible without actually having sex. Okay, so let's look at this one. This is supposed to be Electra. Now, when you watch the video, you'll definitely see that this is a young child. We're talking no older than kindergarten. Okay. So let's watch the video on Electra here. 
And Alexa was pretty much going to start out playing a, the little girl child game, Hopscotch. She's going to be throwing temper tantrums and stuff like that. But they're showing her in something that almost looks like lingerie with an upskirt in there, partially developed breast. And we're talking, you know, this is a kid no older than four years old. Yet they try to make her physical look for clothing as sexual as possible. And then we get Florin. I had to go online to the uh, game programmer's website to find out, is this supposed to be a boy or a girl? Okay. This is actually a little boy. We're talking maybe six years old. Uh, who's being made to look like a girl. Let's keep in mind, this one's being made to look like a girl. And read the captions about what this little boy who's being made to look like a girl is saying. They have to show the behind something like that. Now let's take a look at Nia. They don't actually have a video of Nia. But Nia is normally walking around like she's a... Um, spoiled obnoxious eight-year-old but when you have, get Nia as a blade Nia as an eight-year-old is now dressed like this then we have Poppy Poppy is not actually a um, human type person Poppy is a robot made in a laboratory I don't have a problem with Poppy Poppy is one of my favorites Poppy may look like a child, but Poppy is dressed more appropriately and does not act sexual in nature at all in anything you see Poppy do in the game. If a parent come, came walking in and saw Poppy on the screen with the way Poppy acts and the way Poppy dresses, they're like, no problem. Parents going to walk out of the room and go about their business. Then you got the upgraded version of Poppy. Which, as you could probably tell, they've accentuated the breasts some. Uh, they're doing a cosplay thing as a maid. She's supposed to call uh, her driver master, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, and they're showing some thigh with what looks like it could be garters, like a garter belt type thing. So they started to sexualize this robot girl that looks like she's about eight years old. Um to pretend she's being more adult. Then you get the most adult version of all. Only thing is, it's still about an eight-year-old child look. Um, they've accentuated the breasts more. They're showing some navel, or at least a basic shape of it, and they're showing the crotch. So watch, let's watch a little bit of video about um, the latest, most upgraded version of Poppy, the one that's supposed to be adult, but still looks like she's about eight years old. And I've cut all the sound out, but they're showing they're showing the body, showing out her dress, they're showing people's reaction. Now let's uh, forward to um, near the end of the video. They're saying good morning to each other. The only adult in the room is remarking about how he likes it. So the only adult in the room, Zeke, is talking about how he likes it, how it's cool, and how there might be something to all this science after all. And what does this really tell children that are playing this game? In my opinion, it tells the young children that, number one, it's susceptible to be going around dressing like this and acting like this. And number two, adults prefer them this way. 
in my opinion, this is like training young people or grooming them or indoctrinating them, whatever word you want to use, into basically being sexually exploited by adults. Okay, so the other uh, serious uh, thing to talk about on this is exactly what are these blades, okay? Okay, so this one's Pyra. There's a lot of them. Um, Pyra is pretty much the first one you come upon that's a rear blade and it's the main part of the storyline. Yeah, Pyra's supposed to look like she's about 8 to 10 years old. Notice the, um, the outfit, the breast, the whole thing. Sexual exploitation. But she's of a, um, a race called Blades. So there's two main races in this. There's Blades and there's Drivers. They have a relationship that's like slave and slave master. And so let me explain that. The Blade, their whole purpose for existence is to serve the driver, to fight for the driver, to die for the driver if necessary, and do whatever menial task the driver wants or needs them to do. They get no say in the matter. That's slavery. Now, if the driver dies, she reverts back into what's called a core crystal, and which is kind of like an egg, if you want to think of it this way. And if another driver happens to find a core crystal and bonds with it, then she'll be reborn. But she's going to come out looking exactly like she does now with absolutely no memories of her life. Other than her purpose in existence is to serve the driver, fight for the driver, die for the driver if necessary, and do whatever menial task they want or need you to do. That's slavery. And I'm surprised I've never heard anybody actually, you know, voice out on this before. But there's all these people in society that make their websites and go online and talk about, you know, people owe them for slavery and all this stuff. And <clears throat> I'm not going to comment about them for or against one way or the other, but I'm surprised that they would not at least bring to light things like this that are making the slavery issue seem like it should be a normal thing in society. In fact, in the game, <clears throat> to be able to bond with the core crystal, it considered to be like a really good thing, puts you above everybody else. Uh, all, your, all the other common people in the town, if I bond with the core crystal, I now have a blade, I am better, supposedly, than everybody else. And basically that, I just earned a slave. That does not make me better than everybody else, but that's part of the message of the game. Now, I'm surprised they haven't been called out on this in the past. Anyway, you may feel like I'm totally out of my mind, and that's quite okay. But if you have video games that you want to listen to comments, that you want to say, you know what, this game is not like that, let me know. I might be interested in buying a game and playing it, because I love video games. I'm 60 years old, but I still love video games. If you find some that are doing things like this, by all means, put those in comments also, and I'll make sure that I don't buy those video games. Okay, so this is your chance to to let me know one way or the other, and maybe other people that view, and I don't have a lot of viewers, but other people that view have the opportunity to say, yeah, I'll try that game, or no, I'm not going to, based on what we're saying about it. But I can provide video evidence that these things are happening in games, and I can, if I've got the game, I can show it. Just like I've got videos out about, um, promoting pedophiles and helping pedophiles that are older people hook up with toddlers basically in uh, one of the video games and there's part where they're promoting um, homosexuality and being transgender and you have to do this in the game or you cannot complete the game and there's parts where 
you're basically the neighborhood drug dealer. I've done video on that. Um, and I'm not trying to be the neighborhood watchdog on these things, but I do a lot of tutorial videos and I've been noticing some things and I think that we ought to call them out. So <sighs> all that being said, this is Talon with Old Guy Stuff on Busy Corner Lane. Have a safe, happy, peaceful, wonderful day and goodbye.